بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. The celebrated Russian poet Rasul Hamzatov, who is also the national poet of Dagestan, writes in his book My Dagestan, which is also available in English. In Sanase, Kathazil has the Koronak Egotail, Wama Wutsun Chesi Korona, Tankogusun, which is a famous quotation of Ernest Hemingway that sounds in English as a human being needs two years to learn to speak and 60 to learn to keep quiet. Words are powerful and when used well, they can incite people to both good and evil. They give those in positions of power more power. And when someone with influence says something publicly, it can have a huge impact on society. While everyone has the right to say whatever he or she wants, those with influence over audiences have the responsibility to exercise their free speech with vigilance. While speech can be and is used benevolently, it is also used nefariously. Examples of either are unneeded here. The evidence for both is plentiful and ever-growing. Words matter, and saying certain things can have unforeseen consequences. The ability to speak and communicate is regarded in the Quran as one of the greatest blessings that God Almighty has given humanity. We cannot stress the importance of a kind, polite, nice, and friendly word more than Allah did in the Holy Quran, teaching us how to talk to others. In the Quran, God details how he created humanity and then taught humans the power of expression or speech and understanding. The complexity and range of communication possibilities distinguishes humans from other living creatures. The power of speech and expression is both used effectively and at the same time one of the most abused blessings. The Quran addresses this issue by emphasizing each individual's responsibility for their own deeds. One of the major responsibilities is that of the word. The Quran contrasts between responsible and irresponsible use of the blessing of speech. In Surah Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alam tara kaifa dorab Allah mathalan kalimatan ajibatan kashajaratin ajibatin asluha thabitun wa faruha fis sama. تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون ومثل كلمة خبيثة كشجرة خبيثة اجتثت من فوق الأرض ما لها من قرار So you note how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets forth a parable A good word is a good tree whose root is firmly fixed and its branches reach to the sky that is very high giving its fruit at all times by the permission of its Lord, and Allah sets forth parables for mankind in order that they may reflect. And the parable of an evil word is that of an evil tree uprooted from the surface of earth, having no stability. This contrast highlights that the crux of the problem lies not in the power of speech itself or the ability to produce words or communicate messages, but rather it lies in the use or abuse of this ability according to the responsibility the Almighty God has assigned along with it. The Quran outlines a number of recommendations on how to prevent the abuse of speech. Many verses point out that one should avoid vain and idle talk, with an emphasis on the importance of weighing words carefully. Muslims are encouraged to either say something useful and constructive or keep their silence. In describing the characteristics of true believers, God Almighty mentions in the Quran that they avoid meaningless speech. And the believers are those who shun vain conversation. In another verse, the Quran outlines the proper response believers should have towards those who do indulge in abusive speech. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا 
and those worshippers of the merciful are those who will not witness vanity, but when they pass by some evil play or evil talk, they pass by it with dignity. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, reiterated this same principle. In a hadith reported by Bukhari, the Prophet وسلم, said, he who believes in God and in the Day of Judgment should say good things or keep quiet. It follows that there are no restrictions with regards to speech as long as there is a good purpose and intention behind it. Jarir, one of the companions of the Prophet وسلم, narrated that when I gave the Pledge of Allegiance to Allah's Apostle, he stipulated that I should give good advice to every Muslim. There are many verses in the Quran which highlight the kind of speech that is recommended. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ husna. Speak fair to the people. This highlights one of the qualities of good speech, fairness. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim يَا أَجُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا which means all you who believe, keep your duty to Allah and fear Him and speak always the truth. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also stressed that the reflection of belief is the purity of the heart. In turn, the reflection of the purity of the heart is the kind of words uttered by the individual. In another saying, the Prophet وسلم, points out that a goodly word is charity. So charity in Islam is not just money, and the very least that people can give in charity is a good word. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, قَوْلٌ مَعْرُوفٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ صَدَقَةٍ يَتْبَعُهَا أَذَا وَاللَّهُ غَنِيٌّ حَلِيمٌ Kind words and forgiving of faults are better than sadaqah, charity, followed by injury. And Allah is self-sufficient, forbearing. The gravity of the responsibility of the word is such that the Quran warns against using speech to provoke enmity and conflict. This irresponsible use of words is so abhorrent that the Quran attributes it to the speech of the ultimate evil, Satan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَقُلْ لِعِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَغُ بَيْنَهُمْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ لِلْإِنسَانِ عَدُوًا مُبِينًا Say, O Muhammad, to my servants, that they should only say those things that are best and decent. For Satan tries to sow discord and enmity among them. For Satan is to men an avowed enemy. The danger of the abuse of the faculty of speech, therefore, is directly related to the dreams of Satan. Slips of the tongue can have dire consequences and the cause of such slips can be serious in both this world and the hereafter. One should also maintain courtesy when talking to people. In Islam, courtesy of the word is not only prescribed to Muslims with regards to other Muslims, it applies for all people as the Almighty Allah points out in Surah Al-Ankabud of the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْهُمْ وَقُولُوا آمَنَّا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ إِلَيْنَا وَأُنزِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ وَإِلَاهُنَا وَإِلَاهُكُمْ وَاحِدٌ وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ An argument with the people of the scripture, Jews and Christians, unless it be in a way that is better than mere disputation, with good words and in a good manner, inviting them to Islamic monotheism with his verses except with such of them as do wrong and inflict injury, and say to them, we believe in the revelation which has come down to us and in revelation which come down to you. Our Allah and your Allah is one, and it is to him we have submitted as Muslims in Islam. Therefore, my dear respected brothers and sisters, a kind word from us represents Islam, whereas a harsh tone reminds us of devil. We as Muslims should be courteous in our speech towards all people of all religions, all philosophies.